Hello everyone and welcome to the Blue Blouse channel. This is my third time going live this evening. I don't know what type of crosses are following me up, but this is my third time live this evening. In today's video, I'll be talking about preparing your hair for braiding. Now, this is a part two to an overview that I did telling you about braiding, for example, the color schemes and all of that. Um, when the live has ended or when the live will have ended, I will add it to the description box below. But if you're new here, I welcome you. And if you're old, I welcome you because guess what? Without you, my YouTube door would be closed. Now, I'm going to outline the preparation for braiding air here in three simple steps. And hopefully, I can get this live done in 15 minutes, all right? So the first thing is that you should have the blueprint. What builder builds a house without a blueprint, right? So have your blueprint. In other words, have your inspiration of how in other words, have your inspiration of how you want your hair braided. So you can look up with a cornrows, braids, twists, plait, crochet braids, any variety of braids, have your inspiration ready, especially if you are a newbie to braiding, all right? So places that you can look for inspiration would be places like Instagram. You know, Instagram is a place that is full of beautiful photos. And also one tactic that you can use to search is just by searching up a hashtag. You can probably search up um, hashtag braids, hashtag cornrows, hashtag passion tweets. Basically any hashtag that you can think of that is related to braiding, you can either go to Instagram, you can go to Facebook or Google images. Just Google braids on YouTube and go over the images section and you will see some beautiful, beautiful um braids all right also the blueprint depends on whether or not you're going to braid it yourself or you're going to have someone else braid your hair in other words you hire a braider or a hairdresser things like that all right so do your research on your braider because you have some people they braid here really neatly but guess what you lose your edges because the braids are so tight. So go to someone that you know or get a referral from someone that you know has had their braids or get a referral from a friend. <laughs> get a referral from a friend. I don't know why I'm being tongue-tied this evening. All right? So after you get your referral from a friend or your family member or you researched a stylist on Instagram or even YouTube. You have a lot of braiders out there on Instagram and YouTube that post their work regularly. So you can search that way or you can have a picture and go in with the stylist. A good braider will replicate what they see and customize it to your head, all right? Or customize it to your liking. So once you've had your inspiration picture down, that is for the persons who are going to the hairdresser, you just go to the hairdresser. Um, in some countries, when you go to the braider to get your hair done, um, they don't provide the hair. So make sure you ask your braider if they provide the hair or not. Because in Jamaica, when you braid your hair, or at least when I'm going to the hairdresser, you have to buy, um, you do the consultation and they tell you what hair to buy. All right, so you can either bring the hair to them or when you reach there, if there's a store around the corner, you can um, go and buy the hair there. So it all depends on where you get your hair braided. I know in the US or uh, maybe UK and Canada, you probably don't have to get the hair from the dollar store or from the beauty supply store that you go to, but um, they will charge you a little extra to get the hair if your hairdresser provides the hair. All right, the next thing that you should note is how long are you gonna keep the braids in? I know some people don't consider it, but how long do you plan to keep the braids in? Um, do you plan to keep it in for two weeks? Do you plan to keep it in for a month, two months, three months, how long? 
And the reason why I said this is because it will affect the size somewhat. All right. Um, and your texture affects that too. Because someone with a silky or oily hairstyle, I wouldn't tell them to keep braids in their hair for longer than three weeks. Three weeks maximum for oily hairstyles because braids can get real itchy real fast if you have an oily hair type. A drier hair texture like mine, I can get away with wearing braids for four weeks or longer. So how long are you planning to keep the braids? That's it. That is in. That is very important, and it it is dependent on the dryness of your hair, or how oily your hair is, as well as the texture. Um, silky textures. What's it? Silky textures. Braids tend to last a short amount of time, and a short by a short amount of time. I mean, three weeks or less, right? And a more textured, like a more coarse hair, like um, I wouldn't even say type four here because in the fours and in the threes, you have some silky hair, some buttery hair there. But if your hair is a little bit more coarse, a little more rough to the texture, they tend to last long. All right, so that's the texture part of how long your, your braids will last. And... Um, um, when I say that, I mean how fast your hair is going to get frizzy. That's all I mean by that. Or how fast your hair is going to slip out of the braids. And there's a way around that, by the way. You just match the texture here according to your own texture. But I will get into that. So back to me saying how long it will last. All right. So... The length of time when your braids are going to be kept in. If you're going to keep your braids for, let's say, three weeks or less, you wouldn't want to spend time braiding your hair with half an inch parts or even quarter inch parts. Why are you going to spend eight hours braiding your hair just to keep it in for three weeks? That is quite frankly, a waste of time. You could have gone with an inch or an inch and a half and spend four hours doing your hair. You understand what I'm saying? So how long is very important. And also related to the time, you want to braid your hair at a reasonable volume. So for me, for example, I knew that I would keep my hair for six weeks. I am approaching week week five of the braids in my hair now. So I chose um, about an inch, right, to braid my hair. So if I hadn't braided my hair this small, by the way, in my eyes, this is big. This parting is big. So for argument's sake, I braided my hair medium because I didn't want my hair to frizz up too quick. You know what I'm saying? Um my hairline or edges, as the natural hair community, community puts it, my hairline wouldn't get frizzy as fast or my natural hair wouldn't poke out of the braid as fast just because I knew that I was keeping my hair for longer than four weeks as well as I didn't want my hair to get frizzy fast. So consider the length of time when it comes to the sizing of your hair. Because if you're keeping your hair less than four weeks, honestly, it's not worth sitting down 14 hours to get micro braids just to pull them out in four weeks. You know what I'm saying? And also, if you want to keep your hair for an extended period of time, you don't want to have long patra braids for two months that is going to give, your neck, give you some neck strain. You understand what I'm saying? So if you plan to go with braids for two months, you can go a little smaller and a little shorter if that is what you want. If you have the, the neck muscles around here to go ahead and carry those big, in Jamaica we say kata, which is basically a cloth that you put rest on your head to carry load to the market. A long time in a siwan kata, right? You don't want to have this big bun on your head, this big voluminous bun on your head when you plan to keep your hair for less than four weeks. You understand what I'm saying? So know how long you 
are going to keep it in. So after you choose your style, know how long. And also, if you are planning to keep your hair for four weeks or longer, um, I would not choose a carnal style to keep past four weeks, nor would I choose um, certain crochet hairs to keep beyond four weeks. Hi, it's Gaming with Kaylin. I saw you there earlier. Welcome, welcome. We are talking about preparing your hair to be braided, all right? And I spoke about the blueprint, meaning having an idea of what you want to put in your hair. And then under that caption, I spoke about knowing how long you want to keep your hairstyle in. And my advice was, if you want to keep your hair longer than four weeks, go medium or small. And if you plan to keep your hair less than four weeks, go big. All right. Now, the next thing that you could, you should um, consider when you're going to get your hair braided is the willingness. Let me repeat that. The willingness to take down those braids. All right. If you know, if you know you are not the most patient person that father god put down here on earth if you know you're not the most patient person do not get micro braids and then when the time comes for you to pull them out you are just doing this going through your hair going through your hair and breaking off everything that would have defeated the purpose of braiding your hair right so if you know you don't have the patience to pull out the hair do not get small braids, all right? And another option, another way of getting around that is hiring somebody to go and take down your hair. But why would you waste $5,000 or 50 to 70 US dollars just to pay someone to take down your hair when you can do it yourself? Let me tell you a trick. Let me tell you a trick that I do. Don't tell anybody else that I tell you this, right? Let me tell you a trick that I do when I do micro braids and I want to pull out my hair, right? What I do is put my hair in a ponytail. So guess what? The only thing that you are seeing is the parameter of my hairline when my hair is in a ponytail. I position my hair in a ponytail that I know I can manage it. I like low buns because the high buns, you know, they pull on the scalp and, and things like that. So I put my hair in a ponytail and I measure about maybe four inches back. And I measure that circumference all around my head. And guess what? I take a week to pull out my hair and no one knows because guess what? I start taking my hair down from the middle. Do you see the tactic there? So if you know you're lazy and you can't manage to pull out the fine hair, start pulling out from the middle in here. Right now I am planning to pull in out my hair. I'm planning to pull out my hair for the weekend and I'm going to start here in the middle. So if I fall asleep in the night and I'm lazy, really really lazy not to finish my hair i start from the middle and the ones that have pulled out the extension out of i twist it up put it in my little ponytail and no one has to know what goes on in the middle right that is a tactic <laughs> all right so as i was saying if you know you don't like to pull out your hair when you get micro braids do not do it that fine or you can start in the middle and wear a ponytail for the next week, week and a half, or hire somebody to pull it out. All right. So I spoke about volume as it relates to having patience to take down the hair, as well as um, volume when it comes to um, how long you want to do the hair. No. Also relating to volume and the amount. If you have a small head, please, 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 please. Do not put too much hair on your head, all right? Much a natural volume. The more natural the volume looks, 
the more complementary it will be. And volume can be manipulated. Um, if you want um, thick long braids, you, you see like how my hair is tapered right here? Volume can be manipulated. If my hair was hot watered, hot watered straight with this um, thick tip and this skinny skinny end, it wouldn't be complementary. So what I did, I braided my hair light and I added some curls to the end. These braids are a little bit dated, but um, envision that the curls um, add a little volume with that. All right, now I am going to get into number two, your supplies when you are getting your hair braided. All right, so I spoke about having a hairdresser um, provide the hair. As I said, not every hairdresser provides the hair. So if you don't know, ask them what hair to get or ask them if they provide the hair. All right, and then here are some tools that you need to get when you are braiding your hair. Some hairdressers that provide combs and dryers and things like that. When you are braiding your hair, I would suggest um, getting a blow dryer. I don't use a blow dryer every time I braid my hair. But for example, if you're going to use, if you're going to be doing cornrow braids, like invisible cornrows, um blow drying the hair makes it easier especially if you are going to be doing it yourself all right so if you don't want to blow dry your hair of course you can use other stretching methods but i tend to like um blow drying my hair when it comes to that so into the actual supplies supplies now so if you are going to braid your hair you're gonna need um Braiding here, of course, that's what we're talking about. But you're gonna need braiding here that matches you the best. In other words, um, for example, if you have textured hair, go ahead and get a textured textured braid. You can, you, you, really and truly, the only hair that I don't, I think that doesn't match um, most hair textures would be like Toyo Colon here or the Passion Twist here. Um, for my hair type, the Passion Twist here, I wouldn't use it in my hair starting from the roots because it's so silky and my hair is textured. So it would slip out easily, easily. Um, things like, I think it's Spring Twist here, Ghana Twist here, Passion Twist here. I would not use it from the roots of my hair because it's going to slip out. I would use rubber bands. Or even if I use it in my hair, I don't expect passion twists to last in my hair more than four weeks because it's so silky and it's so smooth. So um, consider that when you're getting your hair. If you want your hair to last long, maybe past four weeks. As I said, I use four weeks as a marker because anything beyond four weeks to me is long. If I plan to keep my hair in a protective style past four weeks, um, I wouldn't choose a silky braiding extension here at all because when it's silky, your hair tends to get frizzy faster and also um, it tends, I don't know, to me, smooth hair, it gets frizzy faster and it slips out of your hair faster. So if you plan to keep your hair for a long time, you can get something a little bit um, textured. Expression here is always good to go. You can't, you can't go wrong with expression any at all. It's straight, but it has a little texture. So the texture creates some type of a grip in that sense. You understand? So, um, yes. So... That is that that is what happens when it comes to the texture of your hair with the preparation. All right, for the amount of hair that you're gonna use. All right, the best thing to do is ask the person in the beauty supply store um, how many packs of hair that you think would do your head, or you can ask the person who is going to do your hair. Um, how many packs 
that it would take to do your hair and how many packs depending is dependent on how long or how short you are doing your hair so for my hair for example my hair is basically armpit length down here i used two packs of expression and my density was light my hair is braided lightly um the majority of the bulk here is my hair and then you just see the skinny end right even though the the um the braids were tapered so how many packs of hair is depending dependent on how long the volume and how short by regular common sense if you're gonna do long braids get more packs let me use expression here as a point of reference all right so the expression here that i use is an 84 inch here so i cut that in five and that gave me me um armpit length of course with feathering you know that the hair is gonna get longer so i use two packs of expression here to braid my hair um medium density to this length now if i wanted my hair to um not graduate as much in terms of fat hair and tapering down here i would have used um three packs and cut it in four instead of five just to give you an example of what i'm talking about and as it relates to buying the amount of hair for um for crochet braids Crochet braids can take a lot, especially if the bundles are small. If you can put a bundle and fit it between your index finger and your thumb, you are going to need a lot of hair, right? The average bundle has about maybe 15 or 20 pieces. And um, for crochet braids, normally the bundles... It, dep it depends on the company, but average, if I was to crochet braid my hair, like the one that I used the other day, um, if I was to crochet braid my hair, I would go with five or six packs, depending, and depending, and what I am talking about is the, the twisted one, the rope twist one, the Senegalese twist, I used like five or six packs, and the bundles were like this big the bundles had about 30 pieces a 30 either 20 or 30 pieces in them and i use about four or five i think that's a good number to choose you know if you're doing um curly hair you don't really need more than four packs i don't care what curly hair it is once it is a skinny bundle that looks like this you're not going to need more than four or five packs. But as I said, the best thing to do is actually ask the person in the beauty supply here. So I talked about here. Now, other additional tools that you're going to need would be, of course, a rat tail comb. Now, in this day and age, who, tell me who, doesn't own a rat tail comb, right? Um, so get your rat tail comb for parting you will also need rubber bands um it depends on what you're gonna do if you're gonna do the rubber band method to put braids in your hair of course you're gonna need rubber bands but most importantly if you don't get anything else you are going to need some type of product to hold your hair so this is the fashion plus um edge wax I got this a few weeks ago. I actually like it. I mean, no edge wax really works on my hair, but this one holds it for up to two hours. Um, this is the strength number three, as you can see on the bottle here. I went out the other day and I saw um, strength number six in a white tub. And for the life of me, I can't find it. I'm planning to do a review video on this as well as the strength number six. So, in my vanity, it's probably in my vanity, and I don't know wherever it is. I'm gonna find the two of them and put them in one review video. So, you're gonna need something to hold your hair, whether it's an edge wax or it's um. Whether it's an edge wax, 
whether it's gel or shine and jam. Shine and jam is very popular because it does a good job of taming the flyaways when you need to tuck your natural hair into the braid extensions, all right? Next thing you're gonna need is hairspray right here. Hairspray. Um, hairspray keeps those flyaways out of your way and let me stretch over here for something all right so hairspray this keeps the flyaways from coming too early right and it gives shine to the hair let me tell you something you see braids braids can get dry real fast especially after the first week and you have lost this discipline and you have lots and you have lost the discipline to tie down your hair um this this works wonders especially if you're wearing black hair your hair can get dry real fast and then another thing that i like to do too as well is spray down my hair with spritz i mean the applicator is not the best because this shoots in this really shoots straight it doesn't really fray out like that but i spray it and i put it in my hair and it holds those flyaways in nothing. I mean, also mousse. You can buy mousse. Um, mousse does a good job of holding those flyaways in um, when you're doing that. And if you suffer from an itchy scalp, you can go ahead and get um, apple cider vinegar and soak those braids in, soak those braid extensions overnight before you go ahead and use it in your hair so soak those braids in apple cider vinegar overnight for about 30 minutes and then put them to hang and then you can go ahead and use them um if you if that doesn't work for you you can go ahead on the internet and look for a hypoallergenic hair so those who have sensitive scalp itchy scalp things like that um go ahead and get it Right, so I spoke about um, gel edge wax, I spoke about hairspray, and I spoke about this, which is the pump it up spritz, all right, which I've been using on my braids. And um, you also need a bonnet if you already don't have one. I spoke about rubber bands. Oh, a crochet needle. If you're going to be DIYing your hair, you need to get a crochet needle. I took up my crochet needle to show you and it just it just rolled away, rolled away, rolled away. And I can't stretch too far. <laughs> I can't stretch too far because the needle, the needle is right there, and I can't stretch too far, or you will be on the ground. Okay. But get a crochet needle just in case you plan to crochet your hair. And also braid spray. I mean, braid spray is neither here nor there when it comes to keeping your braids fresh it's really it's really neither here or there when it comes to keeping your braids fresh all right but go ahead and get braid spray or some type of anti-itch serum um because braids can get itchy if you don't know what you're doing or if you're allergic all right and get a pair of shears if you don't own a pair of scissors go ahead and do that um because guess what you see when you reach the part where you need to finish up the style like you're doing your hot watering or you're putting curls or waves in there um you need scissors to trim those flyaways because especially when you taper the ends and the hair didn't come pre-stretched even if the hair came pre-stretched you need to um you need to clip the hair here not clip your own hair but clip the flyaways that come with the hair because the hot water can do so much and no more when you are to put it in the finishing touches and what else can i think of so i had the products the yeah i think that's it and the hair of course the the products to keep them in the tools that you will need and stuff like that now the final thing that i will talk about look at me who who gave myself a 15 minute limit it's not double that look at that so the the, the final step in preparation for braids is preparing your 
own here. Yes, people, I said it. You need to prepare your own hair, right? So in preparation for bringing your hair, since you will be putting it up, and in some cases, not all cases, you won't be washing your hair in the braids, right? If you're going to be keeping your hair for like tweaks, there's no point in washing your hair. I mean, depending on the hair type that you that you have. I'm speaking for myself. If I'm going to keep braids in for two weeks, I'm not going to be washing my hair, especially if it's um, cornrows, you understand? But like this, that is a little bit more loose and my hair is easier to dry. I can easily wash my hair. Just go under the shower, wash my hair, be out, and let my hair hang to dry. So I even lost track of what I was saying. <laughs> I was saying... Prepare your own hair. So, on wash day, you need to take time to cleanse your scalp. If you can use a clarifying shampoo that day, do that. Because you will need all dirt, all microorganisms off the surface of your scalp. All right? So, go ahead and use a clarifying shampoo um you are going to need to deep condition that day i mean it's really up to you whether you want to use a moisturizing deep conditioner or a protein deep conditioner because i'd say use a moisturizing deep conditioner because wow the effervescence <laughs> all right so I'd say use a moisturizing um, deep conditioner if you are not due for a protein deep conditioner that day because you will need all the moisture that you can get because remember, it's a foreign, foreign object going on your hair. So using the rules of diffusion and osmosis, if something dries going on your hair, your hair will be dried out unless you plan to moisturize your hair during the style, right? And just for neatness and to avoid frizz, I tend not to moisturize my hair within the first week and a half when I just get my hair braided because guess what? I don't want my hair to pull up. So most of the time, I just use my hairspray and be on my merry way because I have deep condition my hair and my hair tends to hold the moisture when it's braided that's the funny thing braids dry out your hair but at the same same time it tends to hold moisture in the hair once you put it in it so i'd say deep clarify your hair deep condition your hair if you need to put a little protein in your hair go ahead and do that because some braids are really heavy and it can mess with the fiber of your natural hair shaft, right? So if you can put a little protein in your hair, if you are not due one, if you're due one, go ahead, go ahead and do that. I mean, with the protein, you're gonna deep condition after anyway. So it makes sense to do that. And that, my friends, is preparing to braid your hair. Now, the follow-up video to this will actually show you techniques all right i know some people with the preparation you expected me to show you me cutting the hair me feathering the hair and things like that but that um but those techniques will be covered in the techniques video as the name suggests i don't mean to use that the same word but i will be showing you in a follow-up video um how I cut my hair, how I feather my hair. Also, subsequently to that, I will show you how to put in Senegalese twists. I will show you how to braid your, the, the one of the easiest braid patterns for certain crochet braids. There are gonna be many things in that video. I might even separate the videos, but that's pretty much it for preparing your hair for braiding. Remember to get your supplies at the beauty supply store. Remember that if you don't have the patience to pull out your hair, do not get it long and flowing. Remember if your hair is thin, try and get a realistic volume 
as in not to burn your hair. Also, remember to deep condition your hair and moisturize your hair before you put it up, with, put it up in all that chemical and fiber. Now, we are at the end of hair braiding part two live. And thank you for supporting. Thank you, Gaming with Kaylin, for joining me. It's bye from the Blue Blouse channel. See you again next time. Oh, and by the way, I left off one item. Um, if you don't have cold wave rods, go ahead and get it. And if you feel like being adventurous, go ahead and get um hair thread. I will show you what to do with it when we reach in the techniques video. All right, the techniques video is gonna be a long video. I am going to actually post a ginger hair oil video before I do the techniques video because that techniques video is going to be a long, long, long video because I want you to catch all the information that you can catch. Bye-bye now. Bye from the Blue Blouse channel. See you again next time.